and uh, good morning everyone i'm very happy to present a little bit of the work that my lab does in a very broad sense and uh, i will just start sharing my screen Sorry, just give me a minute. Some issue. There we go. I apologize for the delay. Oops. Okay. So we'll be talking about cell division and uh, the the beauty about this field of biology is when you refer to the phrase cell division, it actually means that the cell is going to multiply or increase in numbers. So this is a very interesting aspect of biology where we use division and a multiplication for the same context. And you can see a cell here, uh, which is just undergoing division to form two cells. And uh, we're going to discuss the biology. So briefly, uh, mitosis is a very interesting event. It's, uh, we've all gone through this uh, in our textbooks and school books. But uh, in terms of a schematic, you can see that the interphase is when the chromosomes are all intact in the cell. By prophase, the chromosomes double up in number for division to happen. And by metaphase, there is a alignment of all the chromosomes that have undergone condensation at the center of the metaphase plate. And by anaphase, the spindle tends to be split into two poles apart, pulling the DNA to each end. And then finally, the cytoplasm of the cell is also divided into two, which basically gives rise to two cells. And this was discovered in early 17th century by Walter Fleming. And uh, here is a schematic to show you the metaphase, which is going to be the reference point for our rest of the talk. So the spindle poles are labeled with uh, yellow and the DNA is labeled blue and the spindle fibers are labeled with red. So briefly, how does the mitotic spindle form? This is a cellular organelle, which is only exclusively present during cell division. So there are these small organelles called centrosomes, which I've been shown here at a macro level. You can see there are a pair of centrioles inside and lots of protein around them called the gamma tubulin, which actually radiates out microtubules. These microtubules form these red fibers, which is called the mitotic spindle. And the DNA is shown here in blue. This is a schematic to show you the same spindle apparatus so here is the centrosome with the centrioles and the proteins around them. And the chromosomes align at the metaphase plate. And these spindle fibers tend to attach to the chromosome at one end and attach to the centrosome at the other end. And then they are pulled apart. Now, why are we looking at mitosis in uh, CCM and particularly in my lab? It's because mitosis serves many major functions. The first one being embryonic development. This is what we primarily study here. It's also important for renewal of cells and regeneration of tissues. So if you look at a human zygote, which is shown here, it undergoes many mitotic events to form an embryo. And then finally, again, undergo many, many, many rounds of mitosis to form a fetus. 
and the fetus will also give rise to the adult later still undergoing a lot of mitotic events and uh, typically what kind of cells undergo mitosis well uh, in our body somatic cells or cells like the muscle cells the liver cells these undergo mitosis even when we are adults for replenishment and regeneration or repair in certain cases we also have some stem cells in adults which are important for uh, producing the germline or uh, the ovum and the sperm cells then there are hematopoietic stem cells which produce the blood cells and these are critical for replenishment and of course the embryonic cells also undergo mitosis to form the embryo and the fetus at later stages so if we look at the entire event of mitosis a bit closer then you can see this is a one cell zebrafish embryo this is an adult zebrafish this is a common model used to study mitosis in biology so if you look at that one cell zygote it undergoes many rounds of mitosis forming larvae at one day three day and finally giving rise to the adult so the mitosis is a very highly dynamic and very tightly regulated event and there are these ordered events that happen during mitosis so the chromosomes will first form from a condensation event the microtubules will attach to the chromosome chromosomes will segregate and then the cytoplasm will also be separated and like i said it is important for growth and for differentiation any major abnormality during uh, mitosis will result in either spontaneous abortion of the fetus or lethality in many cases slight or smaller mitotic changes will result in misspecification of different cell fates there'll be abnormal tissue architecture and we'll go over these uh, diseases and disorders like microcephaly which you can see here this is a baby with a typical head size and if mitosis is impaired in during brain development in the fetus then the head size tends to reduce as compared to the normal babies and uh, in a severe microcephaly condition the head size will reduce even more so these children have severe cognitive dysfunctions and another disease associated with high levels of mitosis is cancer so if we look at an embryonic context uh, these these are images of the cells in culture so we use both cell culture and embryos to study these events so this is an interface when the centrosome is right here and by prophase the centrosome has divided into two uh, for dna replication to happen by prometaphase you can see the centrosomes have gone to the two poles the dna is in the center which is perfectly aligned by metaphase and by anaphase it splits into two and by telophase you can see the cytoplasm also being divided into two the same events happen during early the embryos this is a sand dollar which is a marine animal which is also used to study these early mitotic events and here are some movies of other animals that we look at during cell division and studying how it affects development so this is a worm called c elegans and you can see the embryo this is the embryo undergoing asymmetric division so one cell becomes two and then it undergoes asymmetry so this is the first division forming two and then four consequently this is the adult zebra fish and you can see this is the embryo this is the eye and that's the tail so when we look at the embryo it's going undergoing divisions two to four to eight and then so on and so forth and finally this ball of cells will migrate down and form the body axis so then the head comes here and the tail comes at the bottom this is a mouse embryo and these are mouse embryos of very early stages where you can see active mitosis happening and the cells undergoing division so division can be symmetric or asymmetric typically a symmetric division will give rise to identical cells of same fate asymmetric division will give rise to two cells of different fates so they will behave differently and this plane of mitosis the direction of mitosis will also drive the elongation and spreading of the tissue so if the spindles are oriented in all different angles you will get tissue spreading in multiple directions 
But if the uh, spindles are oriented in one angle, then the tissue will elongate in that particular specific plane itself. In context of stem cells also, typically stem cells can undergo symmetric division, forming two identical stem cells, or they can undergo asymmetric division, where they form a stem cell and they form a differentiated cell, which will give rise to multiple different cell types. Now, this symmetry versus asymmetry can be regulated by either a tissue polarity or the cell itself has intrinsic polarity, which will determine the orientation of the spindle driving different cell fates. Or it could be a signal from the niche around the cell, which will help in orientation of the spindle to make it into an asymmetric division. And if we look at embryonic stem cells, then this is a first one, day one zygote undergoing two cell, four cell, and then from day three, it becomes asymmetric. And here are these inner cells called inner cell mass. These are the ones which give rise to the embryo. And these are called embryonic stem cells, which are used to generate many different cell types because they are pluripotent. And here is a movie to show you how embryonic stem cells divide. So here is a stem cell that has just undergone division into two. So again, it's very uh, clinically relevant because these embryonic stem cells are used to generate multiple tissue types for therapeutic purposes. Okay, another interesting aspect of mitosis is when it's playing a role in regeneration. So here is a model that is commonly used to study regeneration called planaria. So the beauty about this animal is if you take the planaria and you cut it up in any angle, any orientation and any number of pieces, it will regenerate an entire animal altogether. And how does that do? So if you look at the body of the animal, there are, there are these green labeled uh, uh, stem cells called neoblasts which tend to uh, undergo mitosis and regenerate the damaged tissue. So if you have a worm, which is right here, mitotic cells are all over the body. But when you cut it up here, then there is an initial phase of mitosis, which increases after the injury. And there is a second wave of mitosis, which happens at the site of the injury, which is shown diagrammatically here. So at the time when the wounding is just going to happen, there are these neoblasts, which are shown in purple. The blue are the mitotic cells and the green are the progeny of the neuroblasts. So when the wounding happens, there is a signal that comes to this region and mitosis is increased tremendously, basically giving rise to many neoblasts. And these neoblasts will then recruit local proliferation and differentiation for the repair to happen. So it's also important for regeneration. Now, this, like I said, it's a very tightly regulated process. Now, how is this mitosis regulated? So if you look at an entire cell cycle, then cells tend to undergo growth in the first growth phase, which is called G1. There is a little checkpoint here, which makes sure that the cell is healthy and growth is normal. Then it undergoes DNA synthesis, where the DNA is duplicated just before the division happens. And then there's a smaller growth phase. Again, there is a checkpoint just to make sure that the cell is healthy and normal can undergo division. And during mitosis also, there is a checkpoint to ensure that faithful division happens between the two cells. So at a molecular level, we can see there are many genes. The master regulators are called cyclins. These regulate the growth phase two and the growth phase one just before the mitosis happens. And if you look at the mitotic events, then events like the chromosome condensation, breaking down of the nuclear envelope, forming of the spindle, alignment of the chromosome, how the chromosomes separate, how do they decondense again back, how is the nuclear envelope formed, are regulated by these multiple gene pathways which are required for this ensuring that there is faithful division and uh, of the DNA and the cytoplasmic events. So these are the different checkpoints during mitosis and there are a host of genes which scientists study 
which regulate this process. And what happens if mitosis goes wrong? Well, if it's a normal cell, it will undergo normal spindle formation and give rise to a symmetric division in the classical sense. If there are any defects, like there are too many centrosomes or the chromosomes are sitting at the poles, which they have not congressed properly or they are spindle defects or the chromosomes have not attached to the spindle fibers, then it results in altered chromosome content between the two cells that could give rise to aneuploidy or if there are no centrosomes, the spindle can also not orient properly and give rise to different cell fates. And this is typically shown here. One example of mitosis going wrong is microcephaly. So you can see uh, typically a neuron should undergo proliferative division. In this case, it will form two different neurons of the same fate. In a differentiated division, it will give rise to a differentiated cell. But if any of these defects happen, like there's a delay in cell cycle, there's a misorientation, or there is aneuploidy, it either leads to apoptosis or premature differentiation of the uh, progenitor cell. All these will finally regulate the neuron number and the brain size. This is not a one mitotic only event. There are multiple other pathways that feed into this brain development. So it's a very complex event. But mitosis is one of the pathways that regulate the brain size. And these are different genes which have been shown to regulate multiple different defects. Like these are the genes which are responsible for centriole biogenesis. If these are mutated, then you get aberrant centriole formation or chromatin modeling and finally resulting in aberrant mitosis. And this is a very delicate balance that has to be initiated and maintained during brain development. So proliferation and death has to be regulated. Symmetry versus asymmetry. Sometimes symmetrical division is required. Sometimes asymmetry is required. Then normal differentiation should happen. If any of these balances are defective, then you end up getting a microcephalic brain condition. And another disease that I mentioned is uh, commonly referred to as cancer. So typically cells undergo division and if there's a damage, then that cell undergoes apoptosis or cell death. But in a cancer phenotype, the cell keeps dividing and dividing and dividing. It's uncontrolled. And normally uh, this is an image to show you how breast cancer cells keep undergoing division really fast. And this is one of the approaches where uh, to inhibit cancer growth, the division regulators are targeted in therapeutic purposes and to design drugs, we target the cell division. So here is a normal cell uh, phenotype and in cancerous cells, you can get many cells clustered together, which keep dividing. They can have different odd shapes as compared to a normal cell. The nucleus can be a lot larger. There'll be lots of abnormal looking chromosomes and they will not have proper boundary and definitive shape, which is what is shown here. So you can see a two nuclei cancer cell. These are multinuclei. There are some of these chromosomes are still hanging in these cancer cells. And here is a big cell with a big nucleus. So all these uh, cancer phenotypes are typically um, attributed to defects of mitosis. One example being the multipolar spindle defect. So you see multiple poles. Instead of two, we get four poles. And this will result in either separation of chromatin in an abnormal condition, which will be asymmetric by karyokinesis, which means asymmetric division in two components of the DNA, or it could be in three. Tetrapolar means four. And multipolar, it goes into many directions. All this will result in a tumor cell, which has got multiple uh, DNA components like here. And these are images of other cancers that are typically imaged by scientists. This is a breast cancer cell. This is a, another cancer cell, HeLa, which is undergoing apoptosis. So you can see all the projections coming out. And uh, we've all talked about the animal system. In terms of plants, the mitotic pathway is relatively conserved. So you can see a prophase, a metaphase, an anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. But there are some differences. 
the first difference being there is no cetrosome in the plant cell the plant cells also un don't undergo any cell shape changes typically animal cells undergo rounding the plant cells have rigid cell walls so they don't undergo uh, shape changes there is a furrow formation in the animal cells which is absent in the plant there is no formation of furrow and there is a novel organelle which forms called the cell plate which is formed by organelles called phragmoplasts that divide the cell into two so in summary what i have tried to tell you is that mitosis is required for embryonic development you can see a mouse embryo here it is important for regeneration events and tissue homeostasis and repair it's a very highly regulated dynamic process and we can uh, study this at the cellular level and aberrations in mitosis can result in uh, miss uh, uh, cell fate or abnormal tissue architecture which is what is shown here and in developmental disorder context diseases like microcephaly and cancer so some of the questions to think about um how does the spindle fiber find the kinetochore for attachment this is a long standing question many people are still addressing this this is a big gap in the field how does a somatic cell become cancerous so what are the triggers that make a cell undergo uncontrolled division then what is the mitosis uh, how what differences in mitosis happens between animal cells plant cells and yeast and more less evolutionarily involved animals like bacteria and lastly what is the difference between mitosis necrosis and apoptosis and how does the cell know that i need to undergo division or i need to undergo cell death or i need to just uh, remain in the condition that is around it so these are the some of the questions which are still not completely answered in the field and with that i like to end with a Uh, original cartoon of uh, mitosis by walter fleming so thank you very much and i'll be happy to take questions sure meghna uh oh, sorry dr megha kumar could you could you please switch on your video i will just come back so thank you so much for that wonderful discussion and uh, actually i was thinking how would i have felt if you know i were in school because all the colorful pictures and the videos were so you know hooked, like it would make me hook up to my chair it was really nice of you you started off with the very basic and uh, you can move on the top and yeah. then have stop screen sharing yeah there you should be seeing stop screen sharing option and stop disappear on sorry Yeah. Can you look for view options or something? Yeah, just give me a second. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So there we go. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, I am sure that the school and college students really loved it. so there are a couple of questions for you i'll start off with some very basic ones uh, because i don't want to make them feel like their question has not been answered so one very basic question is what is apoptosis apoptosis is basically referred to as cell death so there are a whole lot of cascades that happen during cell division especially something called a caspase pathway which initiates the signals to the cell these are intracellular signals to tell the cell that now you need to undergo death so the dna will be split up into bits and it will undergo uh, death basically the cell will die and all the cellular functions will be stopped this could be initiated by an external signal or it could be initiated by say uv radiation any of these factors can also trigger it and it could be a cell intrinsic event also okay uh, so there's one more uh, interesting question on uh does cell biology or cell division has a role to play in producing transgenders yes it, um 
not completely in terms of uh, in the sense of mitosis but yeah meiosis and all the uh, because i didn't touch upon meiosis in the interest of time but if there are this junction uh, events during chromosome segregation in the oocyte and the sperm it will give rise to uh, that phenotype yeah uh, so one interrogative question i would say is uh, one of the participants wants to know if you could take the stem cells of planaria and then inject it into the bodies of humans do you think they could regenerate i don't think that would be completely possible because i think the neoblasts need the niche completely which is what we don't understand at the moment in totality what that niche is so these stem cells are very niche uh, specific uh, cell types so they need the micro environment around them in order to actually proliferate and give rise to the different cell types and the cell types from neoblasts will be planaria specific right it may not regenerate the cells of the human that may not happen some cell types yes if you give it the right condition maybe but it will not be able to regenerate all the human cell types so maybe one last quick question because we are already running short of time and the next speaker is online so mm-hmm. one quick question is uh, a basic question i guess how are tumors formed from somatic cells so this is the question that i wanted people to think about right so somatic cells can undergo uh, tumorogenesis because every cell has something called oncogenes these oncogenes are present in pretty much all the cells and triggers like uv radiation or chemotherapy or uh, you know as something like smoking these things can trigger uh, pathways in the cell which initiate uncontrolled division so that's how these oncogenes become active and these are pro cancer genes so they will start promoting cancerous phenotype and they will start undergoing division Sure. Thank you so much. I think you still have loads of questions coming up, but unfortunately, we will not be able to take all of them. So I think uh, Dr. Megha Kumar would be happy to answer them uh, personally. I guess if people email her, right? Yeah, that's so I think all scientists at CCMB are open to that. So I would encourage the audience to just email Dr. Megha Kumar and thank you once again for that engaging.